part of the, of the ministry. And, um, and we want to acknowledge them this morning, um, the young professionals. And um, we want to have a little talk with them this morning, just for a few minutes and to let them know that we appreciate them being a part of the church. Um, sometimes, you know, we have these professionals around us, but we don't take the time to acknowledge them. And so this morning, we want to, want to do that. But this one, as I said before, um, he's unique to us. Um, because up to last week, he hit front page in the paper. And I don't take that lightly. When I saw it, I was so elated um, to know um, that we have such caliber people in the church. But more so, when I read the article um, and saw where he was faced with some serious challenges, um, where uh, disease actually took over his life. And I've seen him for years, you know, um, with that, with that challenge in his health and did not know that it was so deep. And so this morning, with all the challenges that he went through, could hardly walk sometimes. Um, the young man went to University of the West Indies, went to the University of the West Indies and came out with honors. It was in the papers. He came out with honors. Uh, um, and, and so this morning, I really want to take the time to tell him I appreciate him. More so, he hails out of Delhi, Vega City. Um, he has been working with the challenges in his body as a technical assistant at the Ministry of Health. Uh, a government national public health lab, um, laboratory, right? And uh, I just, he has a very unique profile, but I don't want to take too much time reading the profile. Um, he attended the uni University of the West Indies. His career um, aspiration is to become a procurement manager. And this has propelled him to pursue a BSc in management studies at the University of the West Indies, of which he graduated with honors recently in November, 2021. Um, I'm gonna invite him to come to talk to us a little bit. My son, Darren. Hey, How are you? I'm good. Morning, everybody. Proud of you, son. I remember your mother was strong in our church. Your sister, Minister um, Blair, she's still strong as one of the leaders. And I remember you as a little boy coming to church, and now you grow. You grew up in the church. Yes, um, I did. With with the various challenges that that you had. Now, you went to university and graduated with honors. And when I saw you in the paper, front page, um, I was so elated to know that the paper picked you up for the challenges that you had and have you placed on the front page. Um, that's like the young people who are around who are faced with challenges and some of them just fall over and die. Um, tell us a little bit, what was the challenge? What is the challenges that you're still having that affect you um, for walking properly? What are the challenges that you have? Okay, um, 
before I go ahead, um, I just want to thank you again for having me on the platform. Um, it's truly a pleasure to be here. Um, I grew up in this church um, over the years and seeing the children praying in the mornings um, it reminds me of the days when we were in Sunday school and we had youth congress and youth for Christ with Pastor Tomlinson um, at that time. Um, we did all the competitions going around Jamaica in the Youth for Christ competition. So I just want to encourage the young people in the platform and on the platform at the moment um, continue believing in the faith that association this church is teaching you um it is what has kept me on my journey so far um i can tell you that the faith um instilled in me from a younger time it has been the foundation and what i've been building over the years so it has what has kept me despite my challenges um despite mm. seeing what i am seeing um thinking that um god has a greater plan for my life has continued to keep me fighting, keep me going, um, and keep on pressing on. So I just want to encourage all the children, all the young persons on the platform, continue keeping in faith. I know sometimes that the things of the world might drag us in that direction. And I've been dragged sometimes as well, but I can can, can certainly say um, that the prayers and the things that I've learned growing up in this church has definitely put me on the path I'm on now. Mm. Um, growing up, I was diagnosed with facial scapular muscular dystrophy in 2013. Um, growing up, it was not much known about it. Um, I've learned over the years that it's a process that doctors have described to me as a slow death. However, um, despite the condition, despite the diagnosis, I have tried to let my faith lead me and teach me that um, this is the path that God has put me on. And the only thing I can do about it is try to be a servant to him and try to use my life as an example for others to not give up and to continue to seek for better for themselves and to show them that evil within us, God shines through us despite what is seen to the world. Um, so over the years, um, I've been working about 11 years now. Um, it has been a challenge. Um, walking has now become a challenge. It's one of the hardest things because due to the condition, the, it weakens the muscles. Um, so you have poor balance. Um, the, light, the slightest nudge by someone in a crowd can trip me over. Um, walking, just bouncing my foot on anything at all can trip me over. So I've had nasty falls over the years. I've been in the hospital many times. Um, bruises, scrapes. Um, however, I still, still kept going. Um, I'm at work every day. I'm a full-time healthcare worker. I work 13 hours almost every single day. Um, the only day I get off is a Saturday um, due to the high levels of COVID in the country. So I'm at work most times. Um, during the days, um, I would require some assistance from persons around. If no one is around, I'll have to adjust certain things in my environment to assist me to get up. So. Sitting on a low sitting chair is a challenge. Um, being too low in regards to seating is a challenge. Walking long distance is a challenge. Um, standing for too long is a challenge. Um, so there is the need for what I call a poor, poor hydraulic wheelchair to assist me. Going forward. Before, you, before you go there, son, um, um, Growing up with, with your family, um, your little two niece there now, they're my, my little Denisha and, and um, they're, yeah. they're, yes, they're my, they're my little queens in the church, little baby girls. Denisha just prayed a while ago. They're my little queens. Your family is always special to me. 
But one thing the, the paper didn't put out there, that you lost what, three members of your family, your mother, your a sister, and my grandmother, and your grandmother, right? Your mother was so dear to you, your sister, um, she died almost suddenly. Um, and it's part of the challenges that you have, um, you're having in your body. Um, you still triumph. You, you, you came out with flying colors at the University of the West Indies. Um, that, that drew my attention. Though the paper didn't bring out those challenges, you, you, you had to have lost those people who are so close to you. I remember the, 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 the funeral of your mother. You got up and you fell in the church. I can, I guess the men who have to run and grab you because of the, the problem you're having with your muscle. I, I remember all of that. But the key thing is, God really pushed you forward. How did you master the whole aspect of your studies with these challenges? What, what, what do you see ahead of you? Why are you pushed so far, so far? Um, pushing in regards to school, um, I remember the final year, my mother died. Mm. Um, the level of depression that took over no one no because I'm not a person of many words, so most days I would stay locked in the room. But I thought about what she wanted for my life. Mm. Um, about all the things that me and her discussed and mm. over the years it's just the thought of making her proud and making my family proud and because living with a condition like this, um, many persons don't expect much of you. Mm. Um, as I told the doctors, told me that even to this age, um, I wouldn't be as active as I am. Mm. Um, many persons with this condition is not as active as I am. But I try to not let what is seen physically determine who I am. Um, the condition itself is one that's very telling because it takes a lot out of you. Um, I remember a lot of times that you with that we had classes and some of the teachers didn't lecturers didn't know of my condition. So they'll move to the class move the classes all the way across campus and sometimes I had to walk some distances. Um, but I remember what I wanted. Um, I knew that the vision that I have for my life is not defined by my condition. And your mother, so, know, mother know is very proud in heaven. Um, I just even thought about what she would have wanted for me. And I continue to push in um, as I encourage persons around me all the time. Um, the work never stops. Um, anything that you want, once you don't give up on yourself, just keep working, keep fighting, keep praying. Um, there will be times that the things that you see are not as glamorous or looking as good as you want them to be. But God's time and our time are not the same, so keep working. You will see that you are fighting. I know many times I went to my bed crying and I'm not gonna say yes. There are times when I knew what was gonna happen, but I tried my best to just keep praying, keep working. Um, the Bible tells us by the sweat of our brow we shall heat bread. So mm -hmm. keep on working, um, keep on putting in the work. So that's how yeah. I told myself that at some point that the reward will come. Darren, and that I, helped the degree. Darren. Yeah. Darren, I watch, I watch you as you, you come to church sometimes and um, you weren't using a wheelchair um, so people have to keep holding you up to walk. Um, how did you manage to go through the university 
with not being able to walk properly. Uh, you said they keep moving the classes, not understanding your your challenges. How did you get through um, that? The, the university did, did as best as they could to um, place most of my classes in locations where I didn't have them. But there are some times when some of the students would be disgruntled at the fact that they're in a smaller room or a room without an AC. So some lecturers would try to accommodate them based on the amount of us in the room and having enough space. That would be an unexpected move. So once there's an unexpected move, I'd have to adjust. And I didn't want to make them uncomfortable. So I tried to work with it. Most of the times I had my nephew with me there on a Saturday. Um, so he would assist me, we would take our time and if it took us half an hour to get to the class, um, we'll take our time and venture up the campus to ensure that we got there. Even though we got there late, but we did get there and persons in the class would assist us and give us the notes that we missed. And we just kept working and keep going and kept doing what was needed to ensure that I did the classes and I did big, got the grades and I did the exams. And mm -hmm. Just to keep going, the university played a key part in ensuring that some things I had I, I didn't have to deal with. So that was a big part of what contributed as well. All right. Um we gotta get you back next time. I'm sure Doc um Dr. Tomlinson will get you back next time. Um but you need to be mobile now. You need a you need a wheelchair. And um um that's that's where I am. Um you you want something like that, right? Yes. You didn't, okay. you, yeah. You didn't you didn't um, tell me about it, but your sister Denise, um, after oh, talking, okay. I really want to get you on the program this morning with this in mind. Um, um, and she said this is one that you really want, but you don't have it. You have to buy it over right. season. You have saved up two thousand US dollars. Yes, save the yes. uh, because you have to be spending money um, for hospitals, for going there, going there, um, doing quite a bit there, and um, it, it took a lot out of your pocket. But you eventually saved up two thousand US dollars, and this machine cost four thousand US dollars. Now, everyone that is on the set today. We want to give Daron four feet. His two feet now is not as strong as they ought to. He achieved so much with those weak feet. As I told you, I watched him come into church. He can hardly move without anyone holding him up. But we are carriers in this ministry. That's why many times I quote the scripture that says the man who carried Jesus, I mean, the man, the man who was sick with, 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 with the palsy was a crippling situation. And four men carried him, broke the roof and let him down before Jesus. Well, let's break the roof and let down Darren. He saved the 2,000 US and it is $4,000 for that. Now hear me. I want within a short time that we all come together and help him to raise the other 2,000. The good thing about it, um, why he has 2,000 is because NCB gave him an award, 150,000. And that's what helped him to get 2,000. So um, this, is the, this is what NCB did, gave him 150,000. 50,000 for being so great in the studies at the University of Westminster. So I would like to help him with that wheelchair. Now, I want everybody, um, Sister Debbie is going to put the number up on the screen. I want you all to text me today. Can we do something for him by next week or the other week? Um, just to make sure when he gets that wheelchair, he can, he, nobody have to push him himself, push him in it. He can automatically 
move around like a bike, a bike and four wheel, but he sits on it. He can navigate through. So this is what I thought of when I saw the thing. I said, how could I help him? And so, Darren, that's what we want to do for you. Sister Debbie, could you put the 378 number on the screen now? All of you who love people, who care for people, who wants to help people, text me and I'll tell you how to help Dara with that 2,000 US dollars. You can give in Jamaican dollar and uh, have it fixed. To make sure that you get a wheelchair and be able to move around like all of us are moving around. That's the number to text me on. Darren, I guarantee you sure. son, that roughly 150 persons on Facebook and roughly 100 persons are on YouTube and those of us who are on Zoom, we all are going to be texting that number, including myself. I'll, I'll text that number myself because I want to help to get you that wheelchair. You will do well, son. And I'm sure God has blessed you. In fact, you're a Christian. It's a clear sign that you trust the Almighty God. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you so much. So, Darren, we love you, son, and I want to cover you. Father, I thank you for Darren. He's moving up. Somebody said, put up a chair again. Oh, um, somebody's asked that we put the chair up back just, um, again. I'll do that for you. Um, so just before we pray, somebody's asking that we put the chair back up. I'll do that. It's one of those. Amen. Um, if, if you are interested, maybe somebody overseas could just get it for us. You don't know. Text me if you can get me a chair like that. If you can't, I'll, I'll give you the specs. I'll send it, the, the, I'll send it to you. I'll give you the specs. But everybody else here. Let's help Darren to walk on four feet, naturally four wheels. All right? Thank you so much. The actual cost is $4,069. He has already saved up $2,000. So let's see how fast we can do that and getting that um, thing going. All right. Um, Janet has just pledged $100. And I'm sure that many others are going to be doing the same. Just put Darren on your pledge. If you, you know, we'll, how we operate at the lighthouse, it goes directly to what it is intended for. And we want to thank you so much. All right. So we got to move on now. And we want to thank you so much for, for participating. And Darren, may the light of God's glory shine greatly over you as I pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Darren. I ask you, Lord God, that your blessings will be rich in his life. Oh, God, I pray, Father, that your glorious anointing will continue to flow upon him. He'll stand strong, knowing that you are his master, knowing that you are his Lord, that you watches over him.